What's your plan? It's my plan, and I decide what goes down. You got that? Yeah. My name is Joseph Fares, and I'm the writer-director of A Way Out. A Way Out is a story-driven co-op game. It is designed, played, and experienced only in split-screen co-op, which means you have to play the game with a friend, either online or on your couch. The game starts in a prison. You play as Vincent and Leo. You and a friend will get to know your characters and unfold their story together. You don't know anything about me, man. Maybe not. But Harvey killed someone very close to me. With or without you, I'm going after him. Let me show you some of the scenarios in the game. On the right side, you see Leo was already in prison. On the left, you see Vincent, who just arrived. Now, if you look to the right again, you can see that Leo can be controlled while Vincent is in a cutscene. Here is another one. Vincent and Leo are now in the laundry room. Your goal is to smuggle sheets using a laundry cart. You can approach the scenario in different ways. Either get the cart with Vincent. You know, I got a good pack right here. I think it's got your name on it. It's uh, broken. I don't know. Or with Leo. Get over here, you idiot! Yeah, but I think those two guys are just about to fight. Uh, what the? What? Who's him? In a way out, you will experience something new all the time. Everything you do in the game is unique for that scene. We want you and your friend to be focused and engaged throughout the entire story. But let me tell you, this is just the beginning of what you will be experiencing in A Way Out. Give me a gun! Get him! Run, run, run! Relax, man, I got this. Are you gonna do it? You said I was cursed. You think I'm weak because I'm not like you. You do not know everything, boy. No. But at least I know the truth now. The truth. Hang on, boy! Okay! The truth. from home, aren't you? And here I thought your kind was supposed to be so enlightened, so much better than us. The gods of these realms don't take kindly to outsiders, trust me. When they find you, and they will, they'll make things difficult. Wait here. I will handle this. Oh, that was uh, something, that uh, fight. Oh. 
On our journey, we will be attacked by all manner of creature. To be effective in combat, a warrior must not feel for his enemy. Close your heart to their desperation. Close your heart to their suffering. The road ahead is long and unforgiving. No place for a boy. You must be a warrior. But not everyone is bad. Mother always said to be open to those who can help. Who you were before doesn't matter. This boy is not your past, he is your son. And he needs his father. Every player will own an array of exosuits we call javelins. These suits give players superhuman capabilities and are heavily customizable so they look and play how you want. Bam, looking good. Nice, you've got a mortar equipped. Yeah, I got it on the weekend. You lead the way, I'll follow. This is a vast open world you explore with your friends. Each Javelin exosuit has its own unique playstyle. The Ranger is balanced and all purpose, while the Colossus is a tanking powerhouse. All right, let's see what's up here. The world of Anthem is hostile and threats can come from any direction. It's a dynamic world where the unexpected is around every corner. I'm not sure we want to use all our supplies on this guy. Yeah, he seems like a problem for another day. We're gonna get some fire from up ahead. I'll go low, you flank. I think we got some action on that. Anyone, anyone, we're under attack. Anyone in the area, we're under attack. I think that's part of Praxis' mission. You can equip your Javelin exosuit with gear that brings devastating power to combat. Oh, there are a lot of scars down there. Oh, the scars have a heavy. Yeah, time to use that mortar. Covering 
fire. There's a bunch more coming in. Okay, I'll get this round. <laughs> oh, come on. Be something good. Oh, yes! Jer's Wrath. Oh, nice. Large-scale world events like Shaper Storms are dynamic and pull you off the beaten path with the promise of new stories to discover. Oh, Shaper Storm incoming. Okay, actually, let's get some more people. Hold on a sec. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, what's happening? Right behind you. Storm is getting crazy. So what are we supposed to do? Fly into it? All right, let's do this. See you on the other side. Hello, everyone. My name is Philippe Fournier, associate producer on Far Cry 5. And I'm Mari Knadel, a scriptwriter on Far Cry 5. Today we're going to take you through our extended E3 demo and highlight some of the features that we're really excited about. Welcome to Hope County, Montana. This is the Holland Valley, a section of farmland that the project at Eden's Gate is using as their breadbasket. With us in this demo, we have our loyal dog Boomer as your fang for hire. For now, I just can't resist. The setup is too perfect. I'm going to use this tractor against the cult. The cult is stealing supplies and kidnapping people, using them to prepare for a doomsday that's really just around the corner. We're gonna put you in the shoes of a rookie deputy and drop you into the heat of the conflict. In Far Cry 5, we wanna give you tools that feel like they belong in Montana in your fight against a doomsday cult. Father! Now we're going to make a quick getaway in case reinforcements arrive. Oh Christ, help me. Boomer is just one of the many allies you can recruit using our four hire system. Each of them has special abilities and it's up to you to select which companion to bring along for the ride. Whether you're just exploring the open world or fighting cultists head on in a specific location. <laughs> Cute dog. <laughs> My dad would love to know what type of breed is Boomer? No, seriously. His um, breed is Mutt, but he is um, mostly blue healer by the looks of him. Montana is a great place to fish, and it was important for us to create a system where we allowed players to live that experience. In the rivers and lakes of Hope County, you will find many different types of fish. It's a really good way for players to gain experience and also just get away from the conflict. And here we see the player needs to fight a little bit to get the fish. Nice, catch of the day on the menu. So it's nice to unwind with some fishing every now and then, but we know the cult isn't taking any breaks because they have an apocalypse to prepare for. As you explore the county, you'll come across cultists working hard to serve Joseph, the father of their cult. They're taking food and supplies for their bunkers, they're blocking the roads so no one can escape, and they're destroying resources so the resistance can't use them. And it looks like we spotted something up ahead. Yeah, let's take out our binoculars. All right, it seems like there's a small group of cultists there, Mari. All right, so this looks like a forced baptism. What do you say we get in there, Phil? Yeah, let's do it. I think the best approach would be to go in stealthily through the river with Boomer by our side. I think we're well equipped to get rid of those two guys. Here we're using one of the iconic weapons featured in Far Cry 5, the revolver. 
and you'll be able to customize those weapons by adding attachments or changing the color scheme and hunt the cult in style. Go Boomer! All right, Boomer showing off one of his one of his skills. This can really be a game changer in a fight where you're a bit low of ammo or you don't have the right weapon for the situation. He's a good dog. You know, Boomer's a great all-rounder who can support any play style. Even without your commands, he'll fetch guns for you, take down cultists in a fight, and he'll tag enemies and animals from far away with his keen sense of smell. The game being set in America, it was important for us to bring a wide variety of vehicles from pickups to tractors to big rigs like this one. This one is specifically called the Widowmaker. It's like a battering ram on wheels, and it's a great tool to create chaos and take down enemy vehicles or roadblocks. And it looks like we got one here. Let's do it. Pedal to the middle. <laughs> that boss bobblehead didn't even move. We're so good. We got him glued onto the dash. That's it. Boom. So it sounds like we're listening to the cult radio station. I gotta say, some of their hymns are pretty catchy, Phil. Now we're pulling up to Ryan Sons Aviation. This is the home of Nick Rye. He's a crop duster and a family man. He's doing what he can to keep his family safe and keep the cult from getting his plane, but it looks like they've beaten us here, so let's jump right in. There's no time to waste. And let Boomer like kind of create distractions for us to get behind cover and help Nick fight the cultists. In Far Cry 5, you'll need to improvise and choose from a vast arsenal of weapons and find elements in the environment to take down the enemy. There we go. So we just took down the last cultist at Nick Rise using my favorite stealth weapon, a baseball bat. Sometimes you can hear Boomer growling when he feels a threat nearby. And Boomer is just part of Far Cry 5's living world we've built, where there's always something or someone around you whether you notice it or not. This means you'll always need to be prepared. Boomer will stand his ground and defend you from predators as there are a lot of moments for the player to hunt or be hunted and we've built a deep ecosystem that represents Montana's wilderness. So, you know, we've seen ducks, um, a sturgeon, deer, and this is just a small sample of all of the wild animals that you'll encounter in Hope County. So now we've jumped into Nick Rye's plane. It's been in his family for generations, and with it, we'll take to the sky to destroy some uh, cult silos that are hoarding explosives. The world that we've built is larger than any Far Cry before, and for the first time you can explore the world in any direction that you choose right from the start. In this demo, we're in Holland Valley, and this is just one small part of Hope County. Montana is called Big Sky Country after all. Flying is a great way to travel, explore the county, and scout out new opportunities. And also blow things up. Look at that go! Nice work, partner! Go get the other one. Oh, looks like the cult has decided to intervene. That plane belongs to a Chosen. Now the Chosen are elite soldiers and it's their job to basically crush any threat to the project at Eden's Gate. So if you've done enough to anger the cult, we're gonna engage in a little dogfight with them and show them what we think of them. That's right, even in the air, there's a lot of opportunities for the player to uh, you know, find or discover or get chased by, get by discovered. or get discovered, yeah, totally. Uh, hunt or be hunted, as we call it. I think right now we are the predator. Yep, we got them on the run. They're smoking. And we did it.
Yuri, I'm here. What do you see? Find the rest. Boss wants them dead. Looks like the demons are moving in on Fisk's territory. You got this? I got this. You don't need to kill us, too. Fisk's territory is ours now. Not today. Spider-Man! Tell the boss he's here! Jumpsuit. Slimming. Stay out of my business. Wait, the demons. Who's their leader? Keep my men alive and maybe I'll tell you. Saving bad guys from other bad guys. Not how I thought today would go. Android sent by Cyberlife? It's firing at everything that moves. It already shot down two of my men. Saving that kid is all that matters. So either you deal with this fucking android now, or I'll take care of it. Don't come any closer or I'll jump! No, 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 no. Hi, Daniel! My name is Connor! There's no way out, Daniel. The only question is whether or not you take another innocent life. I'm holding all the cards. If I die, she dies. Look what you did. You were designed to serve humans, not kill them. What was I designed to be? Their slave? Their toy? You're a machine you have to obey. Now put the gun down and let the hostage go. I've spent my life taking orders. Now it's my turn to decide.
him and I kill you. You can't kill me. I'm not alive. Tell that helicopter to get out of here. Lie to me, Connor. You lied to me. My name is Connor. This is our story. One you guys saw at uh, the media showcase, and this one we showed behind closed doors on on the floor at E3, and so for the first time we're releasing it online so that everybody can kind of take a look at it. And I thought I'd just talk a little bit about you know what the differences are, um, and just kind of like just show you what we were trying to accomplish this year. Yeah, I mean the most obvious difference so far is it's the last one was nighttime during the rain, and this is daytime during the snow. Yeah, and that you know, and, that, and it's not just cosmetic, and I think that's one of the things we really wanted to emphasize, you know, because this 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 time we're showing sort of a day in the life of Deacon. You see, he's on the drifter bike here. Um, we wanted to show a little more of the bike riding and how the weather can kind of impact that. So we have this drifting mechanic, right? You see him right. kind of slipping and sliding around a little Changes bit. Changes the handling. Of the bike. Um, that's really interesting. Now there were wolves there last time, John, and these wolves would pursue you down this road, and then Deacon had to turn his back, shoot a wolf. And he got clothesline close right yeah, up there, yeah, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, exactly. So this time you see that he wasn't being chased by the wolves. That's a dynamic event that can just, that just, you know, it's just, a, that can happen or not. It just depends on, on when you're playing the game. Interesting. And this yeah. time Deacon saw the ambush and he was able to avoid it. So he kind of comes up and around and behind them. So does weather impacts whether these creatures show up or not in daytime, nighttime, all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So especially the freakers, they come out. They're mostly nocturnal, but they will come out as the weather gets colder. They become stronger in the cold. Right. And so that will, you know, again, kind of change up the way the game plays. That's very, very... Uh, I, I kind of love that you decided to do this as a demo to show two completely different iterations on the same exact mission in the game. Yes, exactly. So we wanted to have, uh, you know, this. the job is basically the same. Deacon hears that his buddy's in trouble, mm -hmm. rides out to save his life, and, you know, as you can see here, this is a completely different experience from what we showed in the first demo. In the first one, Deacon gets clotheslined, um, and it sounded very painful, by the way. Oh, that. that looks, speaking of painful, um, okay, so <laughs> the combat in this game is fairly brutal. John, you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, we just wanted to make it as, you know, as realistic as possible. So, yeah, we're not holding back on that at all. Um, and, you know, and Sam's done most of his own stunt work for this. And I can tell you that when we're on the performance stage and we're capturing that stuff, we just try to m keep it real, right? Right, right. Well, um, right. There, there was sort of a decision made at some point. What we we've, we've been work I've been wor I've been on the project for what two or three years now. Yeah, I think three years. And uh, and so early on, I think there was a more what were we? It, uh, it was more Kurt Russell <laughs> and sort of a two-fisted thing, and and then it, it turned into hey, let's yeah. take this quite seriously. And what that required is a lot more taking this combat stuff um, and, and showing the horror of the violence that happens and, and, and it were this type of circumstance to take place. I mean, realism, weirdly enough, is the thing we keep going back to when it comes to the, not just the stunts, but also the performance style. I think, you know, it's very important that it doesn't seem like a bunch of actors, uh, you know, saying lines. It was yeah. all very incidental. And we, you know, we wanted the world to sort of reflect that as well. So yeah. you saw there that you know, Deacon broke into that emergency vehicle What's and this? found some supplies. So this is what we're calling our survival vision. Survival so you saw vision. that earlier when he was looking at Manny's bike on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of a way of, of seeing tracks in the world and sort of imagining what might have happened. Mm -hmm. 
And here, I, I just wanted to point out that you're seeing in this part of the demo that there are freakers there. There weren't there before because yeah. it wasn't snowing. It was, you know, and it was getting lighter out. It wasn't getting darker like it is. And so, um, you know, it changes up the way you can play through the level. And what is this? What is so, <laughs> we call this the meat wall. <laughs> the meat wall. Yeah, and it's not just there, you know, to you know make the guys who put them up to, to seem evil. They're there for a purpose because, again, freakers are living creatures. They eat. That's their primary. That's their primary thing. They want to eat. And so you hang these dead freakers up, uh, and it, you know, and anybody, any freaker, rather than coming into their camp like you see here, they would actually we'll stop. stop and snack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then the same thing with this freaker that they've hung upside down. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bear trap underneath it, and um, they use that because a freaker will come, be attracted to the meat, and then hit that hit that trap. Interesting. Another another thing you just saw, by the way, is that is that, that tin can the tin can trap that you yeah that's a, that's an alarm that the time. marauders will put up. And this is again some of the things that marauder camps just do. And you find these marauder camps throughout the world. You'll find traps like that. And then if you're careful and you're paying attention, you can avoid them. Because in the first demo, Deacon didn't avoid it, and he set off that alarm. Right now, now this is the same tactic that he used last time. Throws the rock to get someone to. To lure lure them over and have them step in the bear trap, but this one plays out a little bit differently than last time. One of the things that, that struck me, and we've talked about this obviously as we've shot, but there's there's an effort of the other uh, marauders to get this guy to shut up, and he won't. Yeah, and so in the in the first demo, you, you Deacon's heading on down the trail, and you can hear that happening behind him. Right. And this time we're showing what happened. So, you know, he's watching everybody react to this poor guy trapped in the you know in that bear trap, and she just is like, shut up, shut up, shut up, and then just loses it and shoots the guy. Right. You're Dr. Jonathan Reed, and you're searching for somebody who threatens to dismantle that harmony in Don't Nod's narrative-driven action RPG, Vampire. Exploring London, talking to her citizens will reveal hints about the location of your objectives, but you'll have to earn them by playing with the delicate social microcosms that tie the survivors of the Spanish flu and vampire societies together. Of course I do. You're that man who seemed so lost when he entered my bar a few nights ago. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Uh, I'm still Tom Watts. Welcome back, Doctor. Tom, I need to find Sean Hampton as quickly as possible. I've been told you could help me. I heard the sad saint was recovering at Pembroke Hospital. Did he leave or something? The important thing is I find him, quickly. Uh, why not try his night asylum? He takes care of those who need a meal or a roof there. Where is it? It's in an old warehouse, northwest of here. Just follow the bank to the west and go north when you reach the end of the pier. So we're now en route to the docks to find Sean and understand why he's fled away from the hospital and probably killed another patient, Harriet Jones. As a vampire, you have access to skills in combat as well as outside of combat, often to help you traverse a semi-open world. The most efficient way to grow stronger is to feed from the healthy, not to fight those risking the flu and pollution in the streets to hunt vampires and skulls. If we were unable to beat this mini-boss, we would be tempted to return to the bar, and perhaps feed from Tom for a greater experience boost, returning stronger, but with London thinning in numbers. Vampire's combat system uses a mix of melee and ranged weapons supported by vampire abilities that allow you to be the vampire you want to be. The gameplay is based on timing, positioning and management of different resources. The stamina bar regulates your melee moves and dodges, the blood bar controls the use of your supernatural abilities and the health bar represents your health. There are many areas to explore, loot, and pick up information to learn about the world. It's lore and what happened to London since disease spread. At the beach, we're fighting people operating under the head of the vampire hunter's orders. The crew and guards are investigating this beach, searching for scowls. Stay close, keep an eye on each other. Skulls are a lesser species of vampires lurking in quarantine areas, underground or in dark corners. Due to the Spanish flu epidemic, they have suffered heavy mutations and have recently become very aggressive. It's part of your quest to understand how they became such creatures and ultimately find a cure to save them. In this world, the human vampire hunters and Skulls are having their own fight. As long as we don't get too close, we can just move on.
Sean is a saint who manages a night asylum to provide food and rest to the poorest. Unfortunately, he has recently turned into a skull. Do you believe that, incapable of dealing with his new condition, he has fled from the hospital where sacred ground and murdered Harriet Jones, an old woman who certainly didn't deserve it? Most importantly, he is the pillar of the Doc community, which means he's a very important character whose fate will deeply impact the district and everyone who lives within it. Our exploration, social manipulation and skills in combat have led us to where Sean has been hiding. We must find out the truth about the hospital's murders and ultimately decide his fate and the fate of those who rely on him. The world of Sea of Thieves embodies the freedom, romance, high adventure and the thrilling excitement of the pirate life. As you explore, you'll discover this beautiful world full of countless adventures, unknown dangers, treacherous weather and wild, untamed islands filled with pirate caves and wildlife. Most importantly, the world is filled with other real player crews, often their own voyages. While the adventures that you embark upon in Sea of Thieves will play differently each time, ultimately, every player is on their own personal journey to build a reputation and become pirate legend. Part of this journey will be how you present yourself to other pirates. As players journey across the Sea of Thieves, they'll be able to tailor their pirate by customizing items such as hooks, peg legs, beards, hairstyles, clothing, equipment, and weapons. You'll be able to find the look that suits your character and playstyle best. But differentiating your character also includes building a reputation. The outposts of the world are inhabited by non-playable characters who have come to the Sea of Thieves with their own motivation. These characters have set up their own trading companies, each representing a unique playstyle. The gold hoarders have come to treasure hunt with the goal of amassing great wealth. The Merchant Alliance have come to control trade in the Sea of Thieves, while the Order of Souls wish to control the ancient and mysterious magic of this pirate world for themselves. Each trading company will allow you to build a reputation, get promoted within their ranks, and unlock unique items and titles to show off your progress. Players build their reputation by purchasing and completing the favoured activities of each trading company, including voyages, which are what we call quests. Voyages in Sea of Thieves are physical objects that other players can see. Based on the reputation you've built with each trading company, your voyages will not only become richer and more rewarding, but they'll challenge you more and introduce more mechanics. The way your voyages look to others will also reflect this progress. Each crew member brings his or her own voyages to the table, literally. Any crew member can bring their own voyages to the crew and share their personal progression with others. Players can propose voyages on the ship, allowing the crew the chance to decide together the kinds of adventures they wish to embark upon. In fact, other players may have access to voyages that you don't, meaning that there are rewarding benefits for being part of a crew. Most importantly, there are no barriers in place preventing players playing together, since the most challenging voyages can potentially be shared. There are no waiting for friends to catch up with you, no encounters where you'll face off against overpowered players. The tools and weapons in Sea of Thieves function just as you would expect. A cutlass is just a cutlass. A flintlock pistol is just that. How you use these tools and work with other players is what will make the difference. Even just having an extra pair of eyes and ears in the crow's nest can make all the difference in a game like Sea of Thieves. Elements, such as your reputation progress, mean that progression in Sea of Thieves is not a one-dimensional number. How you look to others, the titles you've earned and choose to use, and the voyages you have allow for far richer interactions between players. This is a pirate world after all, and it's up to you how you want to uniquely express yourself. Now let's look in detail to the kinds of adventures you can have with the trading companies. The Gold Hoarders Trading Company was founded by legendary treasure hunters who wish to amass a great fortune. They are in possession of a mysterious set of skeleton keys, and they will pay pirates a cut of gold when they return chests to them. The more you build your reputation with the Gold Hoarders, the more they'll trust you to go after larger hordes of lost treasure, some of which will be protected by former pirates, now transformed into forsaken skeletons. Some of the voyage types, like the riddle maps, 
will test your knowledge of the islands, encouraging exploration and teamwork. Players also have the freedom to just explore, coming across opportunities in the world that might earn them reputation with a trading company. There are rewards waiting across the world, whether that be deep in caves, on sunken reefs, or in the hands of other players. You just need to seek them out. While voyages give you specific objectives, you'll be free to take on the world at your own pace and see what's waiting out there. Players also receive special awards from each trading company called commendations. These allow players to earn specific titles and show off some of their special achievements. Of course, not all treasure is silver and gold, and we wanted a world with very different activities that players and crews could seamlessly move between. The Merchant Alliance are seeking to control the flow of trade between the fledgling outposts of civilization in the Sea of Thieves. They will pay pirates to scout for supplies and ferry shipments like resources and gunpowder across the sea. These kinds of cargo can earn you handsome rewards if you fulfill your contract and deliver on time. There are, of course, much more valuable resources out there in the world. We wanted our wildlife to not only make the world of Sea of Thieves feel alive, we wanted to make it a major part of the gameplay and fundamental to progressing with the Merchant Alliance. Players will find different breeds of animals across the world, encouraging them to scout out islands to find what they need. Once you find the animals you need, you'll then have to catch them. Then you'll have the noble job of tending to their care on your return journey to the Merchant Alliance. Lightning from a storm and raising water levels are some of the challenges that you'll face. Of course, there's also the ever-present possibility of encountering other pirates who'll seek to relieve you of your valuable cargo. Much like the other tools you'll have at your disposal, cargo can be used in different ways, presenting you with a few tricks up your sleeve to defend against incoming borders. The Order of Souls are a trading company formed by conjurers and seers they have found a way to recapture the enchanted magic from the skulls of former pirates, and they'll reward anyone who brings the skulls back to them. Voyages for the Order of Souls will take players on the hunt for infamous skeleton crews and captains, presenting players with combat-focused challenges as they work together to defeat their targets and retrieve the skulls. Some of these skeletons may be holed up in one of the many forts throughout the world, requiring players to perform a daring raid to make landfall and storm these fortresses in search of the school they need. These valuable locations also present opportunities for other nearby crews. You can never be too sure who may join you and what their intentions might be. These voyages put players on the path to becoming Pirate Legend. But in many ways, these adventures are just the beginning. Pirate Legends will not only earn the respect of their fellow players in Sea of Thieves, they will play a major role in the golden age of piracy that's still to come.